Well hello and welcome. Thank you so much for coming to my channel. My name's Lyndon and in this video I want to take a deep dive into the chord structure for Misty, the beautiful, stunningly gorgeous jazz standard tune which was written by Errol Garner and released in 1954. Now Misty has been done by, well, pretty much everybody. Stan Getz played it, Wes Montgomery, Sarah Vaughan, Ella Fitzgerald, Frank Sinatra, just to name a few. And now you and I are going to take a deep dive through the chords and make sure that we understand all of the chord structure, what we're going to play through it and why it's there. And I'm going to give you uh, some really very simple but very beautiful and very effective ways of navigating your way through these chords. So there's a handful of disclaimers or a couple of disclaimers. Biggest disclaimer really is that this is not the only way that you can navigate your way through these chords or interpret these chords. There is probably an infinite amount of ways that you could, but I just want to give you a nice straightforward way of understanding everything and being able to as I've said, navigate your way through and give you something to, to play. And then you, with the idea being that you can always build on that and develop it further as you go. Uh, something else I want to say is that I'm writing this out slightly differently to how I've done uh, some other tutorials. So I'm going to write the, uh, the letter numbers, the, the numbers of the scale. So like root three, five, seven on my sheet, which I keep indicating to, which you'll see here in in a moment and uh, and then I'm going to have the letter names at the bottom of the screen so good luck with that editor the editors me by the way uh, any other disclaimers? The only other thing that I want to do is to say thank you so much. All your positive comments and your positive feedback and buying me coffee and supporting the making of these tutorials is absolutely life changing. Uh, I can't tell you and all the people in Singapore and Indonesia and Canada and America and, and oh, Scandinavia and all of these people, honestly, I, I'm completely blown away and I I reach out my hand to shake your hand fellow sax players and I'm so happy to help you. Uh, if there will be a worksheet at the end of the, uh, of the tutorial, so I'm going to take this sheet and I'm going to put it up on YouTube so you can hopefully take a screenshot and print it out. And if you get stuck, lost or confused or you need help and support, you can contact me. You can, I'm not difficult to find, you can email me or let me know in the comments below what you think. So let's take a deep dive into it. Let's get going. So these first four bars of Misty, what's going on there? Well, oh, there is a couple of other things. Sorry, if, <laughs> if you're not sure what major two five ones are, and minor two five ones, then this is going to be a little bit confusing or tricky because you won't know what I'm talking about. So what I've done is I've put in the link in the description below, uh, links to understanding 251s and understanding minor 251s as well and harmonic minors would be a good thing to understand because this tune is full of major 251s and it's got a bit of minor 251 going stuff going in there so that would be really really good to be able to understand those. Right let's try again, let's have a look at these first four bars of Misty. Um, uh, so the first chord what we've got, uh, well this triangle in the seven is just telling me to play F major and so what I'm going to do over there is I am going to play the chord tones which chord tones I'm going to choose are root three five seven nine seven and five so I'm going up and down the chord tones guaranteed to sound nice absolutely wonderful and then how do I interpret these three chords well I've got something minor seven followed by something dominant seven now if you've watched my two, two five wall tutorials or the autumn leaves or the blue bossa tutorial then that should now be activating your alert alert this is a two five one situation which is really cool because instead of thinking C minor I've got to take C major and flatten the third and flatten the seven then F7 I've got to think what the seven is and I don't have to do all of that I'm just gonna think this is a, a two and a five in the key of B flat major 
So it's just the notes of B flat major, but starting on a C and starting on an F. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the scale of C minor up to the ninth. Scale up to the ninth. And I'm, yeah, and that is gonna sound absolutely gorgeous over there. Uh, so, uh, that's those chords taken care of. What about here? What have I got? I've got something minor seven followed by something dominant seven. Wait a minute, isn't that, isn't that another two five? It is, right? And you tell me, what is this a two five in the key of? Now, if I need to work that out, all I've got to do is I've got to drop down a whole tone from B flat. Just like here, if I drop down a whole tone from C, that would give me B flat. So I know that this 2-5 comes from B flat. Do the same thing here. B flat to E flat, that would be a 2-5 in the key of A flat. And how I'm going to address this is I'm going to take the first five notes up and down. And I'm going to go a little bit more quickly over those notes. So let's see what that sounds like on my gorgeous tenor which I love with all my heart so the uh, the F major the root three five seven nine seven five <laughs> Sounds absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to loop these four bars now and see what that sounds like. Well, sounds absolutely beautiful and yeah maybe it's not the most complex or difficult solo in the world so far but it's beautiful and it works and it's functional and I can always develop it from there so let's have a look at the next four bars so well I've got F major again haven't I and then let's just move on from this for a sec and have a look at these two chords. So what have I got here I've got something minor seven followed by something dominant seven it's a 2-5, isn't it? And what is it a 2-5 in? Well, if I drop down a whole tone, it's a 2-5 in F. So that's my 2-5. And then this is definitely a 1. So what about this D minor 7? How does that fit into the picture? Is there any way that I can connect this D minor to, to these chords here? And because if you saw D minor 7, you might think, well, that's the second mode of C major. And you wouldn't be wrong, because all this chord is telling me is about the root, the third, the fifth, and the seventh. So you'd be absolutely right, D, F, A, and C. But I'm wondering if there's any way that this connects. And if I've got a client here, and we're looking at something like this, I'll say, is there any way that that D minor relates to F major, that D minor, does it relate? What's the relationship? And they never get it, they just think I'm bonkers. Um, but the reason that I'm using that word is because D minor seven is F major's relative minor. So because this is only telling me about the root third, fifth and seventh, there's absolutely no reason why this couldn't be the sixth mode of F. And that would make it an Aeolian mode so all of these chords then come from F, which is fantastic because my 58 now year old brain doesn't have to work too hard. I can just, as long as I know my scale, I can navigate my way through fairly comfortably. And this structure, this 1625, is super common and turns up all the time. So that would be a really, really good one to recognize. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna play three, five, seven, five, and root. And then I'm gonna play root, three, five, three, and root. And that is gonna sound absolutely gorgeous because again, I'm hitting the chord tone, so it's very hard to not sound beautiful there.
And then what have I got here? I've got A minor 7 followed by D7. Well, that's another 2-5. Can you tell me what that is a 2-5 in? If I drop down a whole tone from A, that would be a 2-5 in the key of G. But look what they do. This is a 2-5, and just as the ear is expecting resolution in G major, they turn it into G minor. Ah, oh, and you get another 2-5. So this is a 2-5 in the key of G, and then this is another 2-5, and we know this because it's turned up a few times before now, in the key of F. And the reason why that works is because the A minor 7 and the D7, just here, start to build up tension, and then instead of resolving, it builds up that tension even more before it gets resolved on this F up here, or this F down here. So what I'm going to do over these two chords is I'm going to play the scale of A minor up to the ninth, and the same here, scale up to ninth, and that's going to sound pretty fantastic, it's going to sound really, really, really nice. So uh, let's see what that sounds like, grab by Hooter again. If I do it without the backing track, so you can just have a listen. So I'm going from here. Then. That's going to sound stunning. Really, really, really nice. That's just going to work. So I'll put that to my backing track. Absolutely gorgeous, sounds lovely. Then the only th other thing that I've got to do is because this all repeats, this is a repeat sign, so we're gonna do it twice. The first time it ends with these chords, and the second time it finishes with this F6, which is another way of saying F major, and I'm gonna play three, root, three, and five. And that is gonna sound absolutely beautiful. So I'm gonna do the whole of the A section now. I'm gonna put these ideas together and see what it sounds like. So have a listen and tell me what you think. Lovely, 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 functional, beautiful solo, hitting all the right spots. Sounds great. So let's go on to the B section. And what do we have here? Well, we've got a C minor seven, followed by an F seven with a, a flat nine, and we'd call this a chord extension, uh, followed by a B flat major. So couldn't this be a, a, a two, five, one? Well, yes, it could, and you could play a 2-5-1 in B-flat major over that, and that would be fine. However, this what's going on with this flat 9? So, uh, what's going on is that type of 5 is the 5 of a minor 2-5-1. And th if you have a minor 2-5-1, then one of the ways that you can navigate your way through that is by playing uh, a harmonic minor of the 1. So I could play a harmonic minor in B flat 
uh, in B flat and st start that on an F7 and that would give me a complicated sounding chord called a Phrygian dominant. Now look, don't let this melt your brain. Don't worry about it, it's absolutely fine. We only really need one note for that F7 to bring out that beautiful, what it's trying to tell us to do. Um, and let me, let me show you what I mean. So if I write out the scale of B flat harmonic minor, you'd have B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G flat, a and B flat again. Now if I start that on the F, I'm going to have F, G flat, A, B flat, C, D flat, E flat and F and then this scale qualifies as an F7 with a flat 9. And the interesting note about this is this note here because the second note of the scale is the same as the ninth. In other words, if I, if, if I extended this scale and put the G flat here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is the note, this is my target note, this G flat here. So all I'm gonna do, just to keep things nice and straightforward, is I'm gonna play from low C, I'm gonna play the scale of C minor, Dorian, and I'm going to play that up to the 11th. So C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E flat, F. And then when I get to F, I'm going to drop down to G flat, otherwise known as F sharp. Actually, I'm not dropping down, I'm going up. And that is going to pull out the beautiful colour of that F7 flat 9 because I'm playing the flat 9. And then I'm going to, on this B flat major, I'm going to use a technique which I've definitely done in one of my tutorials, which is to hit all of the chord tones, but instead of starting on the root, I'm going to start on the seventh. So I'm going to be playing seven, root, three, five, seven, nine, seven, five, three, root, and seven. And that's going to sound particularly delicious because uh, I'm over that B flat, I'm not starting on the root and finishing on the root, so it's not going to sound very obvious, it's going to sound much more sophisticated than it is really because it's just really hitting the chord tones but it's going to sound lovely. So uh, I'm just going to go straight to playing that over the backing track, whoops, hopefully, and just loop this. By the way, the app that I'm using is iReal Pro, fantastic app, thank you so much uh, iReal Pro people because your app is brilliant and has helped probably millions of people and I hope you've done very well on it. It's absolutely brilliant. So I just want to make sure I can hit low C. <laughs> Certainly can, sounds nice. Right, so here we go, let's try that. just for good measure. Sounds absolutely beautiful. I think it just sounds so, so, so nice and it just it's just nailing the solo. Fantastic. So let's have a look at the next four bars. So, well, we've got some interesting stuff going on here. Um, look, B minor 7 followed by E7. Isn't that a 2-5? What would that be a 2-5 in the key of? Well, if I drop down a whole tone from A, that will give me the... Uh, sorry, that <laughs> gave the game away. If I drop down a whole tone from B, that will give the game away. So that is a 2-5. I could definitely think of this as a 2-5. A badly drawn 2-5 there, uh, in the key of A. Let's try and make that a bit clearer, Lyndon. There you go. Uh, yeah, so I've got a 2-5 in the key of A. Now I'm going to come back to this chord in a sec and have a look at these two because, well, isn't this exactly the same as what we had here? I think it is, so we don't need to labour that point. That would be a 2-5, and this would be a 2 
five as well. And I'm just laughing because my cat's coming. Come here. No, she's not going to come. Okay. So, uh, yeah, this is definitely a 2-5 in the key of G, and this is a 2-5 in the key of F, exactly as the same as what we saw up there. So, uh, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to play, uh, let's, first of all, let's address this G7. So, this, how does that fit into the picture? Now, years ago, that chord really gave me uh, a lot of jip. I couldn't understand how it fitted in or why it was there. And what it is, the way that I want you to think about it, is a bit of connective tissue. So uh, this G7 is what's called a backdoor dominant. And the rule is that it just connects this 2-5 to these series of 2-5s. And the rule is that you drop down from whatever this is, a whole tone, and put a dominant scale in, and that will be a nice bit of connective tissue. I'm not going to worry about it too much because I've only got two beats so to, in which to play this chord only lasts for two beats. So again I'm just going to hit one note. So uh, and the note that I'm going to hit is the G. So over this 2-5 I'm going to play the scale up to the ninth and then back down to the G, to the G. And that, again, that will sound really, really, really nice because I'm respecting that chord and I'm bringing out the color of that. And over these two fives, I'm gonna do something slightly different to what I did here. Well, completely different, actually. I'm gonna play root three, five, seven, and three. And then I'm gonna repeat that pattern over here. Root three, five, seven, and three. So let's try out these uh, ideas over this and see what it sounds like. I know that it's going to sound gorgeous because I'm hitting the scales and the chord tones. Right, so here we go. Sounds really, really, really nice. It's doing the job ever so well, and I understand everything that's going on with this chord chart. And then look, the, the next section, we've done the B section. When we go back to the A section, isn't that the same as what we saw up here? It is, woohoo! So what I'm gonna do to keep uh, consistency is for these first four bars, I'm gonna do exactly the same as what I did in the first place. Again, it's not the only thing I could do. I've got an infinite amount of choices, but I'm just gonna keep it nice and simple while I start to get comfortable with this chord chart. So that's exactly the same. I'm gonna play uh, root three, five, seven, nine, seven, five. And over here, I'm gonna play the scale up to the ninth, the scale of C minor, scale, up to the ninth over all of this. It's going to sound really nice. Uh, over here, I tell you what, let's, uh, let's do the same. Yeah, so first five notes up and down. Uh, that's going to sound lovely. I won't play that now because we've already played that and I don't want to make this tutorial too long. And then uh, I've got the same structure, exactly the same, so I don't have to worry about that too much. I've got a one, six, two, and five. And I should probably put that in here as well. So we've got, uh, we've got a two, five, one, uh, and a two, and a five. Yeah, that's it. And this is a one. And here I've got the same, that one, six, two, five that we talked about earlier. And then I've got this beautiful uh, F here, uh, which is really where the tune ends. And then this here, which is yet another two, five, uh, 
uh, he's going to lead me back into the start of the song again and here I'm just going to play the, the root. It's going to be really really nice. So over here I'll do something slightly different to what we did at the top, or again completely different in reality. I'm going to go 7, 5, 3, root and I'm going to do a similar sort of thing, 7, 5, 3 and 3 over here. So that's going to sound uh, ever so nice as well. So let's just have a look, seeing as we've played this before, let's have a look at this last chord and then I'll, uh, last four chords and then I'll, sorry, last four bars I should say, and then I'll play the whole thing and see what you think. So here's those last four. should have said is that I'm going to play root three five seven nine of G minor over there and as you can hear that sounds really 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 nice. So now I've got a complete strategy which I can play over the entire tune so I'm going to play uh, a whole chorus of it and see what you think uh, to this hopefully beautiful but very very simple and easy to understand solo. that what a gorgeous 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 functional solo sounds really 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 lovely um, so I hope you found that useful tell me what you think in the comments below your feedback is gold to me absolutely gold and I love reaching out to all the people uh, across the planet uh, who are watching my videos I find it absolutely amazing if you have any questions that you'd like to ask just let me know I really enjoy interacting and I try and respond to all of the comments thank you to all of the people um, who have bought me coffees and supported making of these videos anything that I make from these videos is being poured back into better methods of making videos which I can tell you is a is a huge learning curve for me doesn't come particularly naturally um, right so I'm gonna finish this video and get on with my editing one last thing is that we are creating a site uh, 
that I'm going to write some courses for that people can buy if they want to, who is going to have tons and tons and tons of free content. So if you have any suggestions or thoughts about that, I'd love to hear them, absolutely would. Hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you enjoy playing Misty and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.